Are you ready to go? Go where? <laughs> That's the question. Um, we'll give all sorts of greetings and all that um, after we've had worship. We just want to just enter right in with the team. And Father, I thank you that uh, you've already prepared a way for us to walk in this day. And we're so thankful to be able to just walk in it and to run after you. And I'm asking there to be such a release of a sense of your presence right from the get-go. Father, a release of, of your presence amongst us as we just join in with everything that's in us, that, that everything within our souls will just rise up and choose to worship and praise him with all our might. So we thank you for what you have for us this afternoon, and we're expecting to know your, your work in our hearts this afternoon, Father, so I just thank you for that. Amen. We just welcome Kelly, Warren, and the, the whole team, and uh, as, as you worship, you know... I'm sure there's some of you who have not been here before. We just love it. You're just so free to, to come to the floor, uh, come to here to, to dance or to move around or to whatever. And if you've got great big flags and banners, it's probably best if you use those over at the side so that you're not kind of whapping somebody in the face up here. That's the only reason we have you move over to the sides. But let's just make a joyful noise to the Lord and see what he has for us today. Because we're going to be on fire. Amen? Amen. Right on. Why don't you guys come up to the front and worship with me? I love having an army of worshipers surrounding us. Right on. Right on. <laughs> I'm going to teach you a chorus of a song you may not know. It's called I Fix My Eyes on You. And it's all about fixing our eyes on Jesus. <laughs> That's pretty much it. But the chorus goes, if you could put the chorus up on the words, that'd be great. You are beautiful. You are faithful. You are more than I could ever ask or imagine. beautiful. You are 
we seek. Jesus, it's your face that we run to. It's your face that we run to. Father, I pray that you would give us the strength to take our eyes off of ourselves. That we would learn how to look into your eyes and give you complete control. That's the only time that anything ever works out is when you're the one in control. Thank you. 
Holy Spirit, come and fill this room right now. We want to feel the weight of your presence. We want to know you're here with us. Father, let our, our prayers and our praise be sweet incense to your ears. God who loves me.
you know, we've just been singing Wrap Me in Your Arms. And uh, we mean that with our whole heart. We see him coming along and putting his arms around us and wrapping us. But I, I'm going to ask Kelly to play that again and to sing that again. And that you would sing that verse, take me to your secret place, and then wrap me in your arms. I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to ask them to lead us again. And for those precious people in your lives that are very heavy on your heart today, because you're longing for them to have such a touch from, from the Lord. I have such a person in my life. And as we were singing that, I, I, I kept saying, Lord, wrap her in your arms. Wrap her in your arms today. Wrap her. And so I, I'm just going to ask if we could sing that, take me to your secret place again. And, but but you, when you just sing that, you just sing, take him to your secret place. Take her, Lord, to your secret place. And then when you sing that chorus, sing, sing, wrap him in your arms right now. Wrap him, wrap her in your arms. And then we'll sing it again once more for us. But I just sense that that is something as the prayer of our heart that we declare. So Kelly, would, would you lead us in that again? Take him to the place, Lord, to that secret place where he can be with you and you can make him like you. Wrap him in your arms, wrap him in your arms, wrap him in your arms. Take her to that place. To that place, Lord, to that secret place where she can be with you, and you can make her like you. Wrap her in your arms, wrap her in your arms, wrap her in your arms. Take us, Lord. wrapping you and he's saying I'll never let you go I'll never drop you I don't make mistakes he says I don't trip up says the Lord I don't slip and fall I'm strong sure footed and in me you are secure Secure in my love. Secure in my love. And secure, says the Lord, in my timing for you. Amen. Mm. Whoa. Whoa, I just sent such a, a wave of his presence. 
And I just sense such a desire to just, just from our inner man, those of you that have that release, to just worship him in the spirit, in the words of the spirit, that we would just let go a, a, a praise and a thanksgiving and an exaltation to him, even in our heavenly language. It doesn't require interpretation. It's worshiping him. It's worship him. Right from the very depths of your being, let it flow. Let the flow. Let the river stir it up. Stir it up, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus and Papa, Jesus and Papa, is that what I say? Well, wow. Mm mm. Now turn to some other person, probably someone you don't know, and say, "God's gonna load you up with His fire this week." Come on. And then you find your way back to your seats. Wow, we. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, that's good. This is going to be a blessing one another week. You find your way back to your seats, that's good. Wow, it is so good to see you. <laughs> okay. How many of you are feeling very hot and you know it's not the room temperature and, and uh, you know it's not hormones? <laughs> it's his presence. It's his presence. Mm. How super it is to, to just to look around and see some faces that um, we haven't seen for a while and on all the new ones. My name is Mary Audrey Raycroft. And um, I'm part of the leadership team here. And uh, you'll find your MCs get younger and younger as the week goes on. They use the oldie goldies first. <laughs> well, I tell you, I'm glad to be an oldie goldie. You know, you don't get retired, you get refired. How many? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go for it. Amen. So welcome to the conference, the Catch the Fire Signs and Wonders Conference. Do you know this is the 13th one? By the way, 13 is a good number. When you consider how many times the children of Israel, uh, you know, walked around to Jericho, and don't tell me six, just count. And they went 13 times and the walls came down. Oh my goodness, I wonder what walls are going to come down this week. Whoa! In fact, stand up and let's give a shout that this 13th walls are going to come down. Come on. Whoa! 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 Yeah! Okay, I think you really believe that. I do. <laughs> Listen, how many of you have never been to a conference at TACF before? Oh, Steve, you've got to stand up. And about. How, how, how many have never? Stand up. Stand, welcome. We just, oh my goodness. Oh my word. Wow. Man, are we ever glad that you marked it on your calendar. I understand one man is here from Europe, and I don't know, I think he took an awful lot of faith. He flew here and the whole bit, and he didn't, hadn't even registered for the conference. But he just knew he was going to get in. <laughs> 
I think that's exciting, coming all the way from a European country like that. But you know what? I really wanted to find out. I was talking to Steve about this. Who here was at the first? Over in the hotel. Can I just have the, the ones who were at the first, um, the first Catch the Fire conference? Would you stand up? Now, can I just, can I be select? Okay, now let's keep standing. Keep the very first one. Not the first one you've been at, but the first one, which was in 1994, in October. You were at the first one. I'm going to ask, let's keep standing. 19, it was 1994, October the something. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask our own ministry team and staff to sit down. Ministry team and staff, sit down. And I want to see who's left that was at that very first one with Wesley Campbell and, oh, hmm? Mike Bickle. Okay, all of you that were here for the very first one, why don't you just run up and get right up here right now. Okay, come on, all you first timers. Right up here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Going strong. Yeah, come on up on the famous green line. Okay, where's Carol? Carol and Steve and Sandra, we just want to, um, we just want to, we just want to bless. It's time. I just have a sensing that you were here for the first one. And uh, you're not lessening anywhere. Nobody that's on staff. I just, I just don't want any staff people up. I just, I just want people that were um, part of that. Okay, part of that very first conference. And wonder woof, woof, what you were getting into in Jesus' name. Wow. Yes. Yes. Refire them. Refire them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Holy Spirit says, have another one. Have another drink. Have another one. Yeah. Oh, Sam, Pastor Sam. <laughs> wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have another one right there. Wow. Woo. You're, oh, hi. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh. oh, honey. Carol. Carol, get Mrs. Sam here. Mrs. Kim. Yeah. Yeah. And these ones are the very first one. I tell you, you think what those, those first ones were like. And you know what? We didn't know what we were doing. That was the fun of it. <laughs> okay. Oh. And there were probably about, I don't know, 3,000 people at that first one. Three or four. So you imagine 3,000 people as noisy as him getting electrocuted by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Alan, 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 could you just find out what's happening with him? I, I, I ask him. Ask. What, what are you feeling right now? Oh, uh, the fire again, like first time. Oh, impact. Uh, uh, presence. It, whoa, like the first time. More, Lord. Oh. I hope you understood that. <laughs> Okay, well, well, interesting. Surprezo, come on up just now, I think. <laughs> I know that, that probably 99% of you do not know Surprezo. And Surprezo is in Iris Ministries with Heidi Baker. He's international director for that wonderful work over there. And, um, hey. Now look, he's a fine, upstanding leader. Isn't that right? <laughs> yes. And uh, I just wanted uh, to give him to give you, a, or you to give him a greeting, and that your heart's going to be open to receive, because this is a signs and wonders man. Uh, you know, he just moves as the Holy Spirit would have him move, and I just really think that he has something from the treasure in him for us this week. So can you, can you say hello or something? Hey, hey, hey. Hello. 
Oh, I'm just bringing two greetings. First greeting is from Mozambique, where Heidi and Rola and the Irish ministries. And who, ha, 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 who? And the last greeting is coming from the heart of God, where the saints abide. And you might ask him, when did you come out from the heart of God? I never come out from the heart of God. I'm right there right now. Hallelujah. Oh, when is he speaking, Steve? I haven't got my book out open. Oh, Shabbat. Tomorrow? Tomorrow night. Oh, I don't know if we can survive till then. (laughs) Yes. Wow. Wow. Oh, you are in for it. (laughs) Oh, wow. Now, just let me make an explanation, too. Um, of, of some of you that perhaps had not read the, the, some of the current stuff, um, there's a regret, but there's not. How can we? How can I may regret something? But not, my goodness, the anointing up here! It's one of these ones where you just kind of want to lay down on the floor. Um, but grandmothers don't do that, do they? <laughs> um, you may not know that. You stop that, you monkey pants. <laughs> that ta. Todd Bentley will not be able to be with us this weekend because he just has had some uh, overstrain on his body. How many of you have ever been in the ministry with uh, sessions with Todd? A few. And it just, when he was in um, Africa a few months ago, uh, his blood pressure went a little high and his heart went a little erratic. And uh, so his board of directors have just directed him. Isn't that what boards of directors are to do? It's interesting, they're not all yes men. The board of directors advised him not to take any more trips for a while. And so, you know, in that mutual submission place that they were in, he chose not to. So, but listen, listen, I am so excited. And if you've read your program, you see that Bill Prankard is here. And uh, he's not here, but he'll be here tonight. And we are so absolutely... um, blessed to have him I just I just absolutely love the man and I I say that respectfully and you will too he's a wonderful wonderful healing evangelist who uh, who's gonna just bless our socks off tonight and tomorrow morning and and, and tomorrow afternoon Um, I I have to do it's an always annoyed to say announcements can be anointed I think about an eighth of you agreed with that but there's just some beginning housekeeping stuff and you're going to find as the days go on, those that are hosting the different meetings, we'll have things to share with you that are important for us to know corporately, okay? So um, first of all, I want to talk about the product. You're going to hear about product a lot, you know. There's going to be the DVDs of the, of the sessions available um, in the Resource Center um, during and after. And there's going to be uh, videos, Bill Pranker's videos and DVDs. But... That worship will just, the, today, will just give you a, an inkling of what is on Kelly Warren's um, two new CDs. Kelly was our worship leader today. And uh, my eyes, uh, Fix My Eyes on You by Kelly. I don't have that one. I think I better get that one in Embraced. And I, what was the first one called? I still play it all the time. And I was saying, what's the one in the blue cover? Huh? No. Heaven's Whisper. Oh, that was the second one. See, I guess I didn't hear the first. Absolutely fabulous. So we have got such a, a, an amazing selection of uh, worship CDs and Robert Moses, Augie. Hey, Robert, it's hot off the press. So it's just out and you will absolutely be, I mean, he is the most awesome worship leader. I know he was sitting in the back row today with his guitar, but he is just the most awesome worship leader, tender, gentle leader that you'd ever want to listen to. So I know that you will just really love this. And um, Steve, oh yeah, okay. If you've not been here before and you want to know about this place called Toronto, there's the Father's Blessing, which I don't have up here. If you've not been here before, please get a copy of the Father's Blessing that uh, 
our John Arnott has written, but this one's the story of Toronto, of sort of what happened back at the beginning, January 20th, 1994, and some of the things that have kind of progressed since then. You're gonna probably wanna have a copy of that so that you know. How many of you have been told, gee, you're brave, I can't believe that that many are here for the first time. How many of you have been told by scads of people that don't go to Toronto? How many of you have said don't go to Toronto? Well, only two, only two or three of you, really. Some of you are afraid to say. You know, there's something within us when somebody would say, don't go, you probably say, oh, why not? I better see what's so awful that I can't. <laughs> I'm not supposed to go. It's wonderful. Jesus is wonderful. And um, in the, um, I think you probably got a handout at registration. I didn't check on this, so I hope you did. Got a handout about Catch the Wave Conference at Sea. I think that that, hey, I just lost myself. I think that, <laughs> I think that that's probably filling up rather quickly, but it's an awesome, awesome experience with um, evangelistic and healing outreach on uh, one of the islands, I think St. Lucia, but I'm not sure, and, and uh, it's, it's fabulous. So make sure you find out all you can this weekend, about, or this week, about the Catch the Wave uh, conference at sea. And um, I just have some announcements that are important to get our information up to date, if you don't mind, I, don't be bored. If you received the Spread the Fire magazine in the mail and you've moved in the last two years and the magazine, hey, maybe the magazine's going to the old address. Who knows? Or it seems to be lost somewhere. Or if you don't receive the Spread the Fire magazine, and I don't have a copy of it here to flash before you, but maybe I will tonight, um, and, and you think you should. Well, I think you should. The articles in it are absolutely fantastic. Or you're a premium member or a world changer and are having problems logging onto your computer. Um, there are two computers at the back, aren't there? Over by the bookstore, okay. And we've got a staff member that'll help you there. And if you don't want to do that or there's a lineup, um, in the welcome pack that you received when you registered, there's a card called welcome. <laughs> sorry, where you can enter your new address. Please remember to give them the old address too. Then you can put the card in the offering, not instead of, but in the offering, or give it to a staff member, okay? Now, ministry times. Oh yeah, this is, the, this is a Spread the Fire magazine, which is one, oh, August. Oh, God, there's a new one just probably ready to pop. It's fabulous. It tells you all of the upcoming conferences. It lets you know the schedules of the itinerant speakers and where they are in the world. So if you're from that part of the world, you can link in with what's going on. But the articles are, are current, up-to-date, and really faith-building. And uh, if you don't receive it yet and you sign it, I think you probably will start because you're here at the conference. But uh, we would love to give you a free subscription for the year. And then after that, you can decide what you want to do, whether you want to carry on or um, uh, have it. Uh, uh, or subscribe, okay? Um, when we're having the different sessions, we, you see, it's not, we don't have anything canned. How, how many of you are used to routine, and we do this now, and we do that now, and we do that now? Well, the Holy Spirit has not been letting us do this for nearly 13 years here. So when you need to pay attention, and our ministry team people pay attention to how the speaker is leading uh, in his prayers and in the message and so forth, and so we have to pay attention to what they're saying as far as ministry time is concerned, okay? So we need to listen to those directions. And uh, we have a marvelous ministry team here. Um, I'm, I'm, they're around even today, and they will be having, most of them have got a little pink badge on, or if they're visitors, I think they've got a white badge. But it'll indicate that they are part of the ministry team, and they're the ones that we know. Um, in, uh, I, I'm sure uh, lots of you can really minister well to one another, but I think that you should see yourself as here to receive. Okay, and so we prefer on the prayer lines and that, that, that you have a ministry team person praying with you. We also use catchers so that people don't whack into one another if they happen to fall over. It's just a very practical thing. That catchers is not a spiritual thing, it's a practical thing. So every, every meeting when, when there's going to be prayer lines, we probably will say, could we have catchers please? And um, when you get linked up with a ministry team person, uh, they'll tell you what they'd like you to do, and you also get ministry as well as having the blessing of being close by when people are being prayed for. And so probably by tonight, I don't know how many are on the main team. At nighttime, Sandra, how many are there? Maybe about 100 on the... So, you know, it may be that at nighttime we might need 100 catchers. And so all you 
able-bodied, sturdy types say, I'd be glad to help out with that. Um, you're very welcome to pray for your friends or those in your group during meal breaks and times like that. But it's best not to get into in-depth ministry with people in the parking lot or in the front foyer. All right, let the ministry team uh, do, the, uh, do the ministering. Now, parking. Those of you that have driven, oh, for goodness sakes, would you please park in the authorized parking lots? And that's avoiding fire exits and things like that, or we'll have to ask you to move your vehicles. And um, we ask you, and we start now, so maybe by Friday and Saturday it'll, it'll sink. You please cannot park at the parking lot right across the street that is associated with the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We're trying to bless them and not irritate them so we don't park in their parking lot. But we've got a huge parking lot down the street. We're at 10 Marmac. You'll find that. And uh, where's 10 Carlson? Oh, that's up near the, the old Park Plaza, the old Best Western. We got one more. You could tell me about it for tonight. If you have a meal pass, your meals are served in the cafe. And the snack area is open every day at 8.30 and closes at midnight. But please, you know what I'm going to say now, those of you that have been here before. We ask you not to bring food and beverages into the meeting room, okay? Uh, Water is allowed. We just ask you to pick up your stuff when it's time for you to go. And you're going to have to really know how you handle your gum. It doesn't go under the chairs. And it doesn't go on the carpet. Can you, can you imagine the jobs that the team have after a conference cleaning up gum out of the carpet? I think when you're resting in the spirit, something happens to the gum. So I'm just saying, you know, we just kind of, we, we kind of watch that. Now, all of that is absolutely tremendously informative. And I want Steve to come. Did you want the worship team again, or are you just going to come now? Steve Long, oh, do we, do we, how many of us from TACF, we love Steve and Sandra? Oh, man. You have... Oh, all right, all right. Steve, I think you should talk about your own things here. You can do that. Steve and Sandra are our local church um, senior pastors, and uh, we are being absolutely mentored and loved on and cared for, and we just honor them, respect them, and are so thankful for them. So Steve is a speaker for this afternoon, and who knows what he's going to do. Well, we're going to talk about what you were born to do. Turn to your neighbor and say, you were born to do miracles, signs, and wonders. Did you know that? Everybody was born, correct? Some of you were born a long time ago. Some of you were born newer. But God has designed every single one of us. And so the theme of this year's Catch the Fire is signs and wonders. And just to sort of give you an overview, this is the last time that we're going to call... Um, an event here, Catch the Fire. We're sort of figuring, you know what, we've had 13 years to catch it. Let's start doing it. So uh, this year is a transitional year. We're calling it Catch the Fire, Signs and Wonders. And next year, this event is going to be called Signs and Wonders. And so that's going to take over as that, uh, that event. How many of you have uh, a paid Christian position where you get a salary from ministry? Can I get you to stand up? Stand up. If you're pastor, missionary, Bible school kind of person. Okay, good. Put your hand on these folks. Say more. You need to say it a little bit more emphatically than that. So, Holy Spirit, would you come and fill them up? If you're by some of these people, just put your hand on right now and say, Holy Spirit, come and bless these ministers, bless these pastors, bless these people that represent you. Holy Spirit, come. Ooh. We have a group of Russian-speaking pastors and leaders here. Where are the Russian-speaking people? Okay, there's some over here, some over here. Great. And we have about uh, 30 people from Norway. Where are the Norwegians? Norwegians are over here mostly, some over here. Great. Glad to have Norwegians with us. And we have a group of Koreans, and I'm not sure if the Koreans are here yet. Are the Koreans here? Oh, some are over here. Great. And over here and over there. And Brazilians. Have the Brazilians arrived yet? Some of the Brazilians? Okay, there's, there's more than that. There's like, I think, 30, 40 Brazilians that are arriving today at some point. So not all the different nations are here into the building yet, but we're glad that, glad that you're here today. 
Uh, just a couple things in terms of what I'm going to be talking about today is just some, uh, I think, very, very simple things and yet hopefully very profound. I had an experience about five, six years ago with actually a brother who's going to be ministering here next weekend. His name is Roger Sapp. And he was speaking at a church just north of our city. And he said some things that were just absolutely new to me. And yet I also knew them, but I didn't know them. You ever had those kind of things? And it just really changed how I was able to, to minister to people, especially praying for the sick. And that's been one of my hobbies is learn to, learning to pray for the sick. And I've put together... Uh, some of the revelation the Lord's given to me and some real practical things. And so I've got two different kind of books. Do these look like books? These are actually books. It's PDF files, so you have three different choices uh, of how to do this. You can put it into your computer and just read it from your computer. Or if you like paper, you can print it out and then it becomes a book. Or if you have Adobe Reader, your computer can read you the book, which is a neat thing. And so one of these is called 30 Principles for Your Healing. And the idea is that if you are not well, or you have a friend that's not well, that they read one of these a day for 30 days, and by the end of the month, actually hopefully by the end of the first day, they've been healed. Uh, but if it takes 30, then that's fine. And it's 30 different simple little insights. And this is one that's primarily more for people that are, have a healing ministry, and it's called 30 Things That Jesus Knew About Healing. It's the very same kind of, of, um, of stuff, so there's one every day. And there's also a number of different teaching tapes that we have in the Resource Center. And so if you like listening to sermons, great. And this one's called The Key to Perseverance, but there's a number of different options for you that are there. All righty. Are you ready to go? How many of you have sickness or pain in your body? Oh, I'm so glad you're here because we needed people to practice on this week. So we're going to get to you in a few moments, and we're just going to practice on you all week. And hopefully, by the end of the week, there's no one left to practice on. Would that be okay? Well, God is just such a good God. And so we're going to begin. Are you ready? We're going to have uh, scriptures on the uh, PowerPoints as well, so you can follow along. But if you have your Bible, you can start to turn to Philippians chapter 2. First thing we want to talk about, the fact that you were born, you were made by God to do signs and wonders. Here's my first point is that you and I have the very same Holy Spirit that Jesus did. Now, we're going to unpack this in just a moment, but this is a very simple thing, and yet it's a very deep thing. Paul talked about that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead was in him. And I believe that when Paul had that revelation, that there in the history of time has only ever been how many Holy Spirits? One. And so if you have the same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus then all the things that Jesus did, you have that potential as well to do the very same things. Doesn't that make sense? If it's the same Holy Spirit. Now in Philippians chapter 2, the Bible begins to talk about one of these little concepts that that Roger Sapp, this gentleman I was referring to that I heard about five, six years ago. Roger shared this concept that I didn't understand, and it's this, that when Jesus lived on planet Earth, he divested himself of the use of his divinity. Not that he stopped being God, because he's always been God, but he divested himself of the use of his divinity while he lived on planet Earth. Now that was brand new to me. I knew it, but I didn't know it. Because it makes a world of a difference. When I was a little child growing up and hearing all the stories about, about Jesus and how wonderful he was and healing everybody, I used to think, well, that's great. And then people said, well, you can do it. And I'm going, no, I'm not God. I can't do that. I'm not God. Well, if Jesus did all of his healings, all of his miracles, not functioning in his divinity, how did he do all those things? The Holy Spirit. So we're going to show you that in just a moment. Look in Philippians chapter 2 with me, verses 6 to 8. It says this, Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Can you say that? Made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. And so this whole passage is talking about how he's absolutely God and yet when he lived on earth, he lived like you and me. Why did he do that? To show you how possible it is that when the Holy Spirit is in your life, 
and in control of you that anything's possible. And all the signs and wonders that Jesus did were not because he was the divine son of God, even though he was, it was because he was living like a human being, submissive to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And when I understood that, it was like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And I'm here just sort of humbly to tell you that healings got so much easier for me after that. It was so easy to pray for people. I had more expectation. I had more faith. I had more, uh, whatever you call it, good stuff in me thinking, this is actually true. This is going to work. This is going to happen. And guess what? It did. And all that changed was just an understanding that I have the very same Holy Spirit in me. When did Jesus get the Holy Spirit? It's not a trick question. At his baptism. Let's look in the scriptures in Luke chapter 3. Jesus received the baptism at, sorry, received the Holy Spirit at his baptism. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him. One of the translations says, and dwelt with him, lived with him. And it came in bodily form like a dove and a voice from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now the next thing is just amazing. If you have your book of Luke open to chapter 3, you'll realize that right after his baptism, where does he go for 40 days? Into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Who leads him into the desert? Holy Spirit. Who leads him out of the desert? Holy Spirit. Look at chapter 4, verse 14. He's just finished his 40 days, his temptation times. Here's what the Bible says. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. He has the anointing. How long has he had the anointing for? 40, maybe 43, 44 days. He's just, just starting out in ministry, isn't he? And Luke picks up and tells the story. And it says this, news about him spread through the whole countryside. And he taught in their synagogues and everyone praised him. And he went to Nazareth, which is his hometown, where he'd been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. This is his home church. He's been away for two months. They heard he was going down to visit this prophet, John the Baptizer. And so they, they realize, okay, yeah, he's going down. And when he doesn't come back right away, it's like, oh, I wonder, wonder what happened to Jesus. And they hear, all of a sudden, this guy is started preaching. And they're going, Jesus, preaching? That's a change. I thought he was going to be a carpenter. I thought he was taking over his dad's business. And they hear about these stories of Jesus. And so when he gets back to his hometown, they say, well, you need to preach. And so they give him the scriptures one, one Sabbath morning, one Saturday morning. And he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. He turned to Isaiah 63. Look what he says. The spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, he sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Five different things that he was able to do now because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit that came into his life. So do you think that if it's the same Holy Spirit that was with Jesus, there's any possibility that you and I can do those very same things? Is there a possibility? Absolutely. It's the same Holy Spirit. And this is how Jesus functioned, was under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I love this passage because Jesus misquotes Scripture. Now, I don't love it because he misquotes Scripture, but I just love the fact that Jesus included, when he's reading this passage, he added something that's not in Isaiah 63. Out of those five things that he quoted, that he can now do because of the Holy Spirit in him, do you know which one he added? If you turn back to Isaiah 63, you'll find out, and it says nothing in Isaiah 63 about recovery of sight for the blind. It doesn't have anything to do about healing. But Jesus says, I can also cure the blind. Now, why would he say blind? <laughs> I love this. To the best of my knowledge, I've done some internet searches. I haven't gone through every library in the world, but... 61, did I say? 61, did I say 63? Back up. 61, sorry. 
Uh, where was I now? Libraries. To the best of my knowledge, before Jesus came, no one in the history of the world had ever been healed from blindness. This is the uncurable disease or incurable problem. Had people been raised from the dead in the Old Testament? Yes. So that's an easy one. Or easier. <laughs> so Praise's ministry has raised, well, when I saw Heidi about two months ago, she said 50-something people have been raised from the dead. 53 in, your, in his ministry. 53. That's, that's why he's going to talk about raising the dead. I'm, I'm going to leave that to the expert. We had one gentleman here in 1995, David Hogan was his name, and he ministers in Central America, and he was in over 300 people being raised from the dead back in the early 90s. I was like, okay, good. I'm good at knees, praying for knees. <laughs> Headaches I can do okay with. Here's the thing. Jesus is saying the anointing, even for things that have never happened before, they can now happen. Is there any record before Luke 4 of Jesus healing anybody? The answer is no. It looks like, because he's gone baptized, temptation, speak in a couple synagogues, go home. There's no record of healing starting. He hasn't done any miracles yet, because the first one took place in Cana. He's just started teaching. And the word is getting around, and Jesus is saying, you know what, I can even do the hard stuff. I can do the hardest of the hard stuff because of the anointing in my life. I'd like everyone to stand up real quick. This is your first ministry time. Find someone good-looking beside you or behind you. <laughs> now, can I just tell you, if you are a single person, this could count as a dating opportunity. <laughs> so, you know... Grab someone's hand, and men, if you're with a lady that's not married, look at her ring finger and just, you know, take a good look. What I would like you to do is get in twos, if you can do that. Get in twos, or if you need to get in a three, that's okay. Who's ever the tallest person, close your eyes right now. Of your two, close your eyes. The shorter person, put your hand on them and say, you were born to do signs and wonders. You were, you were born to, do, to function in the anointing because you have the same Holy Spirit. Just speak that into the Spirit right now. You have the same Holy Spirit that Jesus did. Just call, that, call faith forward in them. Call the anointing to rise up in them. Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you release more? Spirit of God, come. Thank you that nothing is impossible for my friend because they have the same Holy Spirit. Nothing's impossible. Come, Daddy. Okay, change now with that person. Taller person, you minister to the other one now. Shorter person, you close your eyes. Just switch. Do the very same thing. Father, we call the anointing forward in their life. We're asking for that same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead to be with my friend. Bless their ministry. Overwhelm them. Surprise them. Show up and do amazing things through them. Increase their faith. Increase their expectancy. Father, we're asking that you'd speak right into their spirit and say, you can do this. You were born for this. You were born for this. Holy Spirit. Now, if you're in a group of three, switch over to that third person. Otherwise, stay where you were. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Welcome you. Keep saying the word more over your friend as well. That's always a good word. And if you can speak in a different language, pray in your language as well. Usually you can pray with more anointing and more gusto in your native language. Spirit of God, come. Increase. Increase. Alrighty, you can stop and you can be seated. You can have a seat. So we are all agreed. Are we all agreed that Jesus did all of his ministry through the anointing of the Holy Spirit? You understand that point, don't you? You and I have the same Holy Spirit. Now tell your friend he's got good news for you. It gets better. Here's why it gets better. Point number two, 
you also have the same Father as Jesus, don't you? You have the same Father. And if you have the same Father that Jesus did, all the things that Jesus did, they're possible for you as well because you have the same Daddy. Now here's some amazing things. Did you know that it was that Jesus, it was his Father that told him what to do? Did you know that? Seven times in the Gospel of John alone, Jesus has statements that say things like, well, I've, I've actually got them on the, on the PowerPoints. In uh, John chapter 5, verse 19, I tell you the truth, the Son can do what? Nothing by himself. Who is he dependent on? His Father. He's, in, he's dependent on the Spirit of God that's in him, but he's dependent on his Father to speak to him. He can only do what he sees his Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. Who gave him those visions? Who gave those, those revelatory ideas and pictures to him? It was the Father. Do you have the same Father? So you can get the very same kind of inside information. John chapter 5, verse 30. By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear. Who's given you your ears? God has. And so when Jesus is walking along and this, this little thought comes, you know what? Go and pray for this person. See that person over there? Go over there. Pray, speak this kind of, of, um, of talk today. What Jesus was doing was he was listening every day to his Father and just being guided along by the Holy Spirit. I love that passage in Luke chapter 2 about the two old saints in the temple, Anna and Simeon. Was it Simeon? Simeon. And it talks about how they were led by the Spirit to find baby Jesus with his mom and dad. Amongst all these other people that are there, they were just moved by the Spirit and in the right place at the right time. How were they in the right place at the right time? Inside information from their daddy. Correct? And this is how Jesus ministered. It was just like the, the father just kept giving him pictures and ideas and thoughts and he just came into his spirit, came into his mind, into his eyes, into his ears and he just followed along. So it's good news that you have the same daddy. There's, there are seven verses that Jesus says the very same thing and seven is a number, a, a, it is a number, <laughs> but it's a theme number in the Gospel of John, isn't it? Seven times Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, I'm the door. Seven sermons, seven miracles, seven, uh, what else is there seven of? There's seven, how he was led by the, by the Father. There's, I think there's one other kind of seven as well. John chapter 8, I can do nothing on my own, but speak only what the Father has taught me. Isn't that amazing? Jesus did not have his own ministry. Did you know that? He did his father's ministry. If you're a follower of Jesus today, you have the same father that Jesus did. And so everything that Jesus did, you have that very same potential. If you'll learn to listen, if you'll learn to have your eyes open, if you'll learn to have your heart open. Are you ready for more prayer? Stand up and find someone different. Find someone different this time. <clears throat> Okay, tall person, close your eyes. Tallest person in your two, close your eyes. If you need to be in a three, that's okay, but preferably a two. You get more prayer if you're in a group of two. Tall person, close your eyes. Put your, the other person, put your hand, one hand close to their eye, one hand close to their ear. Can you do that? And bless their ears to hear, their eyes to see in the spirit realm. Father, we are, we are welcoming that inside information. We are welcoming the revelatory expression of Father God in heaven who knows everything, who's in the future. And so he sees what's coming up. He knows what's coming. And he's able to whisper and say, get ready. Someone's about to knock on your door. Someone's going to give you a phone call. You just find that words flow out of your mouth as you are led by the Holy Spirit as you, you speak the words of your Father. So, Father, would you bless my friend right now? Open their eyes, open their ears, open their heart to receive more from you. 
Spirit of God, come. Spirit of God, come. Okay, switch. Trade places now. Second person, put your hand on their ears, hand in, over top of their eyes. Pray the very same things that they are praying for you. Say, Holy Spirit, go more for my friend. Do more. Open up their eyes. Open up their ears. Make them attuned to the revelation of the Father. Make them sensitive to the voice of our, of our Father. Spirit of God, come. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Give them more, Father. More dreams. More dreams. More insights. More prophetic words. More words of knowledge. More words of wisdom. Release that supernatural, supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, come. Come. More. Now, if you're a group of three, switch to that third person. If you're a group of two, just stay right where you are. If you're a group of two, just keep praying for that same person. Holy Spirit, come. Father, we just speak into every person that you have the same Father that Jesus did. The same Holy Spirit and the same Daddy. The same loving Father who doesn't want to hide anything from his sons and his daughters. Who wants to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom to his children. Who's pleased to have his sons do his ministry. He's pleased to have his daughters in the family business. We bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, you may be seated. I actually just made my first mistake of the conference. I had one more point on the Father, which I <laughs> didn't get to. And that is, it's the Father that releases the spiritual gifts into your life. It's through the Holy Spirit. But it's the Father's desire to equip. It's the Father's desire to equip each of us. Is it not true? The Father doesn't want you just saved and then you keep on like normal. But the Holy Spirit comes into your life when you give your life to Jesus and gifts of the Spirit are released into your life. Do you know that Jesus f functioned in those very same spiritual gifts, spiritual abilities that you and I do? So when Jesus has revelation and has a word of knowledge, the woman at the well, you've already been married five times, did that information come to him because he was the divine son of God? No, even though he is the divine son of God. Remember, he put that over to the side. That information came because his father had given him the ability to receive words of knowledge. How many of you get words of knowledge from time to time? Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? I had a dream this morning, and I don't know if you are here because I didn't know who it was for, so I'm just going to say it. I had a dream this morning when I woke up. I was to pray for someone who had a building collapse or partially collapse on them, and they had some crushed bones. Is that person here today? You've had a building fall on you. You've got some crushed body parts. Okay. If you're on the Internet, by the way, hi, everyone that's watching on the Internet. We have probably several thousand of you that are watching. Glad to have you with us. If that's you, um, grab, no, don't grab someone because you probably can't do that. Uh, <laughs> Father, we just ask that wherever that person is, Father, that you would come and just bring healing to their body. And in my dream, I was just laying hands on that person. And so they, this may be for, you know, next time I travel somewhere, maybe for tomorrow or whatever. But it was just that person was just absolutely restored. And so I'm looking for those kind of people. And when we get pictures, when the Father gives us faith, when the Father gives us, uh, all of a sudden there's just a stirring in us and we know, you know what, I could pray for that person. God is just so good. And if you, may, you if some of us were going, you know what, I'm really not all that anointed. I'm really not all that, you know, good. I'm just a new Christian. I'm just whatever. I can remember the very first Catch the Fire conference that we had. Uh, sorry, not the first Catch the Fire. The first anniversary that we had, we were in this building here. And at that time, we hadn't made renovations. And so we could seat up to 5,000 people in this building. There wasn't these walls. There wasn't these walls. This platform was back, back there further. It was just a massive, empty 
warehouse is what this building was. And we had Randy Clark here for the first anniversary, and there was just a blowout meeting. And on the, on the, on the um, Friday night, a lady went back to her hotel, one of the hotels close by, and she's, uh, she was just in a lot of pain when she got back into her hotel room. She phoned her pastor's room. Pastor's not in the room yet. He's still here, probably on the floor somewhere. And so he's not there. So like, she phones at midnight, no answer. Phones at 1 in the morning, no answer. Phones at 2 in the morning, pastor's still not back in, her, in, in his room, and she's wanting someone just to pray for her. She phones down to the reception again. Can you transfer me to room such and such? And the person says, well, there's, there's still no answer there. Can I help you? Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm not feeling well, and I was wanting my pastor to, to pray for me. And this gentleman said, I have just given my life to Jesus. Can I pray for you? And he prayed for her over the phone. She was instantly healed. The next night, she gave a testimony in this place and saying not only did that, serve, that, that hotel have room service, but it has prayer room service. <laughs> and was just healed. This guy was a brand new Christian. We had a group of our youth went down to Texas earlier this year. My son was included in, in the worship team. And there was a girl who the first day of the conference, a three-day conference, gave her life to Jesus. And this church that they're at is called the Deliverance of Something Church. And it is a church for punk rockers. It's like if you don't have red hair or purple hair, like you're, you're, you're just not going to fit in. Uh, the pastor can tell when sanctification is coming because they switch from wearing black to blue. Uh, you know, they just, they're all wearing black. They're earrings, every, well, not everywhere, but um, what do you call them? Studs and metal and all that kind of stuff. It's just one of these kind of churches that's for street people. This girl who's from that kind of background got saved the first meeting. The second day, they decide we're all going to go out and we're going to practice doing this stuff. And she was leading people to Jesus, healing people, and doing all this kind of stuff, and knew nothing other than that they'd said, you can do this now. That's because we have the same Holy Spirit and we have the same Daddy. Isn't that true? Poke your friend in the, in the side and say, you, you're connected. You have the same Holy Spirit. You have the same Father. Alrighty, number three, we are almost done. We're on the home stretch here. My, th my third reason why you were born to do signs and, and miracles is because you now have more truth than the people in the first century church did. They just had the Old Testament. And when they read the Old Testament, they were, read passages like in the book of, of uh, Exodus that said, I am a healing God. I am the God who heals you. Do you know that there wasn't a lot of theology in the Old Testament about God being a healing God? There's certainly lots of stories about God healing people and lots of stories about miracles. But what do we have now? We have all of the New Testament, added truth, added theology, added stories that just put us in a much better position to be confident and to be bold. Do we not? We have more than they do. Not only that, but... In the book of Acts, when the book of Acts was, being, was happening, the Gospels hadn't been written yet. And so when the stories of Jesus floated from village to village, people would just, it's a story. It may be true, it may not be true. When the stories of Paul and his adventures began, it was just rumors, as it were. It, could it be that these kind of things are happening? Guess what? We have that as truth in the Scriptures, knowing that it happened. And so we are positioned to have more faith in our spirit that God is a healing God, that God is a miracle-working God, that God does signs and wonders. Is that not true? All right, point number four. This is the best one. Jesus himself prophesied over you that you're supposed to do equal or better. Did he not say that? John chapter 14, verse 12, the Bible says this. I tell you the truth. I like that. Anyone, say anyone. anyone. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. That's the equal. He will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. What does, what does going to the Father have to do with it? 
Because as soon as Jesus left, who came? The Holy Spirit. And we start right over again with point number one. Do you understand what we're saying here? You were born, you were created by God to be able to do signs and wonders. Now, some of us, you know, when we start meet, uh, moving and healing and, and, and signs and wonders, we're tentative and we're not sure what, you know, is there a right way to say things? Is there, is there a magic formula? No, there isn't. Jesus ministered many, many different ways. His most common way was to lay hands on people. But he spat occasionally, <laughs> didn't he? He, he had people come to him, and he went to people, and it was just a variety of different ways in which he was led by the Holy Spirit, and his father whispered to him and said, do this, do this, do this. And I want to encourage you to just begin to do things. If you've never tried to do a miracle before, have a go at it. Because at worst, nothing happens. At best, a miracle. I can remember uh, probably about five Christmases ago, going downtown Toronto at Christmas time. We have a, an amazing lady. She'll be here one of the nights. I don't know if Young Wa's here today. Is you, oh, she's in China right now, isn't she? So you're not going to meet her. Just an amazing little uh, Korean lady that's part of our congregation. Um, very wealthy. Her husband uh, was a doctor. Big, big house. One of the biggest houses you can get in Toronto. Very wealthy lady. And as she's driving through one of the poor areas of Toronto where people who are on drugs and, and uh, living on the street were, were hanging out. She just had a burden for them, and she began to bring a barbecue on Tuesday nights and just cooked hot dogs for these primarily men that were in that area. And then another a Christian was going by in a bus every, every Tuesday, going home and saw this and thought, you know what, I'm going to get out and just see what she's doing. And he got out and said, what are you doing? Well, I'm a Christian and I'm ministering. Oh, can I help you? And quickly she's began to have a ministry and hundreds and hundreds of people every year give their lives to Jesus. Every Tuesday they have a meal, usually outdoor in a park that's right adj adjacent from this little storefront business that she has. I take my boys there most Christmas and just help with the Christmas meal. We do a whole turkey dinner, the whole bit outside. And I can remember my son Chris, who's now 18, he's working in the bookstore today. Chris and I were serving peas. You know the green little things? We, we are told there's no more peas, so that's all there is when it's gone, they're, they're gone. Lots of potatoes, lots of turkey, lots of gravy, no more peas. And Chris and I, I don't know why, we were just being goofy, and it's like, Jesus, may there not be any, I didn't pray like that, may the peas never run out, is basically what I said. Do you know that we had the same amount of peas an hour later as we did then when we started? It was like... I can remember when my son Chris was, every one of these stories he hears, it cost me $5. There's, there's a, my sons have a royalty fee for stories that involve them of $5 per story. Because <laughs> it's their story as well. Christopher came to me. This is going to be $10, Sandra. Do you have $10 with you? No, all right. Uh, Christopher, when he was five years of age, a sparrow hit our window, like a big glass window on our patio hit the window, bang, falls down, and this bird's dead. Now, I know dead birds. The reason I know dead birds is my father was a professional ornithologist, which means he was a bird studier. He worked for the Royal Ontario Museum part-time here in Toronto. He had, he, it must have been a slow news day several times because he actually got on television on news programming for donating birds to museums. Like, it had to have been a slow day. So I know what a dead bird looks like. And this, this is there. And Christopher comes up to me and goes, Daddy, we should pray for this bird. And it's like, OK. And so he's got the bird in his hand. I have my hand on top of this bird. And we said, Jesus, would you come? And would you raise this bird to life? Took my hand off. Bird flies away. It was like, do you know my son Chris? still remembers that. He was five. What did that put into his spirit? Anything's possible. Why is anything possible? Give me the four reasons. Number one, same Holy Spirit. Number two, you have the same Father. Number three, we have more truth. Number four, Jesus said so. Isn't that right? 
Stand up. One last time to bless the person beside you. Pick on a person that you haven't prayed for yet. Find a different person. Get in twos again. Get in twos. After this, we're going to do it. We're going to find out who's sick and we're going to minister to them. Get them all healed. Okay, tall person, close your eyes again. Tallest of the two, close your eyes. Here's what I'd like you to do. I would like you, to the best you can remember, uh, Jason, are you back at the soundboard? Can you put that last, or Sean, could you put that last slide up in John 14, 12 up in the scriptures? I'd like you to pray this into that person. Can you do that? So with one eye at the board and one eye on your friend, tall person, close your eyes. Pray this into their spirit and then add on whatever the Holy Spirit's saying for you to pray for your friend. Can you do that? Go. Holy Spirit, come into my friend's spirit and overwhelming knowledge, acceptance. I was born to do signs and wonders. I was created. I was made to do signs and wonders. Every asset that I need, I have. Every help I need, I already have. Father, we bless my, our friends. Bless your friend to know that they know that they know that they have the Holy Spirit. We bless you to know that you know that you know that you have the same Father. We bless truth to rise up in you. We bless you to receive this prophetic word from Jesus over your life, over your destiny. Spirit of God, come. Come. Okay, switch. Pray for person number two. If you were in a group of three, person that just received prayer, you got two hands, so pray for both people this time. Pray this prayer over them. Personalize it. Add your own words. So tall person, you're now ministering. Jesus is saying this is truth. The truth is you can do the same or better. You can do more than Jesus did. You can do the very same things that he did because you have the same Holy Spirit, because you have the same Father, because you have the truth of God's Word which says it can happen, and because of the Word of Jesus, this prophetic Word over your life. Come, Daddy. Release more of your Holy Spirit. Release more of your Holy Spirit. Come, Father. Come. Fill my friends. Come, Daddy. <clears throat> Come, Daddy. Come, Daddy. Just speak a blessing over your friend now. You can do it. You can do signs and wonders. You can heal the sick. You were born for this. You were made for this. All righty. Slow down. Begin to stop ministering. Finish off your, thing, your, your, your thought. And you can be seated. Have a seat. Thank you, Sean. We'll just wait till everyone's had a seat. Shoo. Sure. Are you ready for some fun? If you have pain or sickness in your body, could you stand up, please? Everyone else, sit down. But if you've got pain or sickness in your body, please stand up. Oh, this is perfect. That's about half and half, which is really good. Already, here's what I'd like you to do. We're going to have you remain standing, and I'm going to, in just a moment, I'm going to have you put your hand up. And as soon as someone comes to you and puts their hand on your shoulder, put your hand down so that the people who are seated are going to be the ministry team that they know who to go to. 
So those of you seated, in just a moment, what I'd like you to do is to go to one of the people who has their hand up. Don't two of, of you or three of you go to one person until everyone has at least one. Would that be okay? Those of you in your seats, I'd like you to just quickly look around who is close to you that's already standing and just say, Holy Spirit, which one do I go to? So those of you seated, just look around and say, Holy Spirit, which one do I go to? Those of you standing, could you put your hand up? And as soon, those of you seated, as soon as you know who you're supposed to go to, go to them right away. People with your hand up, move your, just put your hand down. As soon, as soon as someone comes to you, put your hand down. And those of you that haven't really felt who to go to, then we'll just have you pick the people that still have their hands up. Okay, start moving. Go to someone. As soon as someone comes and taps you on the shoulder or holds your hand, put your hand down. And hopefully we've got enough for one for everybody. So we're going to need all hands on deck. If you have never, ever ministered to someone healing, this is a good place to practice. Don't start praying for them yet. So everyone in their seats, if you don't mind, just getting up, finding someone close that has their hand up. We're needing probably about another five, ten people in here, over here. We need more people to go over here. Alrighty, here's what we need to do then. If you are, if you are close enough to reach two people, could you do that? <laughs> if you could get two people with your hands, you go ahead and do that. And if there's three of you that have ganged up with one person, could two of you leave and find someone that has their hand up? Alrighty, let's make sure we get everyone looked after. Right in here, I need like a couple of you to be able to minister to two people, if that's all right. And back in this section over here, if there's people that haven't found someone to minister to, could you go over here and grab these people? You don't have to grab them, just touch them gently. Okay, if no one's with you, just grab someone's hand be beside you, even if they're ministering to, um, uh, if they don't even, even if they don't have someone with them. Can we do that? Just everyone's holding someone's hand. What I'd like you to do, those of you that put your hand up, I'd like you to just close your eyes and let's welcome the Holy Spirit. And those of you that are ministering, I'd like you just to begin to say, Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you begin to heal my friend? Would you take the sickness out of their body? Would you take the pain out of their body? Would you heal them of whatever it is that ails them? And if you want to find out what you're praying for, just quickly say, what am I praying for? Am I praying for a heart? Am I praying for a back condition? If it's appropriate to put your hands where they say the problem is, then go ahead and do that. If it's not appropriate, just grab their hand or put your hand on their shoulder. So Spirit of God, would you begin to come? You do not have to have a fancy prayer. If you don't know what to say, you don't need to say anything other than come Holy Spirit. Because every person that Jesus ministered to, it was under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came, when the Holy Spirit was in the mix, that's why people were healed. So Spirit of God, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Just say that for your friends. Say, Holy Spirit, come. Heal their body. Cleanse their body from all unrighteousness. And in my opinion, sickness is an unrighteousness. Restore whatever they need. Fix their eyes. Fix their ears. Fix organs. Fix the blood. Fix skin. Fix bones. Wherever the problems are, restore strength. Restore their immune system. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Those of you receiving ministry, can I encourage you, this is not the time for you to be praying in tongues. This is not the time for you to be praying in English or any other language. This is not the time for you to be singing. This is the time for you to be receiving. All those other things are called work. <laughs> you cannot work to get your healing. It's a gift. You receive it in the very same way as you receive salvation. It's a gift of God. Spirit of God, come. Just to let the Holy Spirit fill you. Let the Holy Spirit touch you. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. 
Now listen carefully to my question here. Those of you that can feel the Holy Spirit with you as you're being ministered to, do you just want to put your hand up real quick? If you can feel the Holy Spirit's presence. I'm not saying you've been healed yet. just saying you can sense the Holy Spirit with you right now. Just wave your hand real quick and you can put your hand down. Okay, that seems to be almost everyone. So, Father, we bless you for being in this place, for sending your Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for the anointing in every person that's here. We can do the same things as Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, would you raise up faith in those that are doing the praying? In James chapter 5, the person doing the praying was expected to pray a prayer of faith. In the Gospels, Jesus talked about how the receiver, that their faith many times was what healed them, their expectation, their positive declaration that God can do this. Spirit of God, come. Already, I'd like everyone just to stop praying right now. And could you all check yourself and see if you could do something that you couldn't do before. If you had a bad back, swish, you know, swiggle your, your hips around, bend over. If you had lumps, check and see if they're gone. If you had bad eyesight, take your glasses off, see if it's any better. If you had uh, bruises, see if they've been cleansed. All those kind of things. Are we checking? Okay. Let me get your attention again. If you feel that something has improved, improved, wave your hand. Look around, folks. Keep your hands up. Look around. This is amazing. How many of you feel? Yeah, let's give the Lord a clap. Father, we bless you. Very, very good. Woohoo! Okay, those of you, we're, this was just the beginner prayer. We're going to go to an advanced prayer in just a moment. This was the beginner prayer. The, the basic prayer is, come Holy Spirit. That's a good one. The second prayer is really a PhD level, and it's the word more. So we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. This was just the welcome Holy Spirit. By the way, you're going to love Bill Pranker tonight when he ministers. Bill has the most amazing stories of anyone I've ever heard, and they're all true, which is uh, good as well. Alrighty, if you feel that, that you've been healed already, run up to the front real quick, and the rest of you just have a seat for five minutes. If you feel you've been healed already, run up to the front. And just come on up to the platform here. Just run right up onto the stage. The rest of you just have a seat and simmer. Come on up here, folks. Come, come on up here. Yeah. This is my wife, Sandra, over here. And Sandra co-pastors are... TACF with me. Come on up here, folks, if you've been healed. So, sir, what happened with you? I got hit by a redwood tree, knocked my knee out, and it caused a lot of pain in my back. And so a tree hit you. You didn't hit the tree. It rolled on me. All right. Hit me below the knee. I was just trying to think, how, how, do, how do trees hit? But I understand if it's rolling. And so your knee, your knee was a yeah, big knocked, problem. It knocked me down below the knee, and I folded over like that and went down. It happened uh, eight years ago. Okay. And now? Pain's gone. Pain's gone. Can you bend? Can you do things you couldn't do before? <laughs> what, couldn't, what couldn't you do before? Could you have bent over like that before? It used to hurt real bad. Okay. No pain? I'm free. Very good. You can go to your seat. <laughs> Sir? It's a, it's a chronic, chronic cough and sneeze, and I can feel like I, I can breathe so much easier all okay. of a sudden. Very good. So you're in your, in your lungs. lungs. Yeah. Well, Father, we just ask that this never comes back in Jesus' name. Thank you. In Jesus' name. And what about you? It was for my shoulder. During a workout, I put it out. And, uh, you know, it's been bothering me, irritating, and now the pain is gone. So, Can you do this kind well, of yeah, it's, it's gone. <laughs> it's, it's very nice to have a healthy body. <laughs> very good. Okay, you can go. Sandra, do you have someone? This is, this is Kurt. And Kurt, what were you feeling? I had all kinds of... Um, I guess indigestion and, and, and um, constipation and stuff like that. And I, just, I just sensed something when she prayed that, that was healed. I just, just felt better. You know, Kurt, I just had a quick question, but did your mother or father have that? Mom. Your mom did. Have you ever had that prayed off? No. 
Yeah, I just felt like to do that. Father, how about you just stretch your hands to Kurt right now? Father, uh, we let me, just let me forgive. Just stop real Whoa. quick. No, let me we just don't stop. Do no, that? you're going to do that. Okay. Remember, we were talking about Whoa. inside information? That's what Sandra just got to ask that question. What, did anyone in your family have that? Do you see how that works? That's because she, her daddy wants people well. And he says, ask this question. Yeah. Go ahead. So, Father, we're to, stretch your hands again, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. We're just agreeing right now, Lord. We just forgive. We just forgive anybody on your mother's side, whoa, your mother's side where this entered in. And Father, I just right, ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you would just um, disconnect anything on that side where indigestion and digestive, um, anything in that area, Father, where it has come through, through the mother's side, Lord, just gets broken off of him right now in the name of Jesus. And we just declare, Kurt, right now that you are totally healed right now in the name of Jesus. And this will not pass on to any of your generation, any, any of your, your family or anything like that. It stops right now and you are whole and we just bless you right now. Whoa. Thank you, Father. Whoa. And what was your Whoa. problem? Whoa. I had a migraine headache. And as she prayed, I literally felt it leave from the front to the side to the back and it's gone <laughs> Yay! and I can stay <laughs> it's very good who prayed for you um, she has her hand up <laughs> Yay! very good Sandra um, and what happened with you 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 said you, you had a very bad back and how long have you had that oh about for two months and this morning, as I brought my luggage down to go into the hotel, it got very bad. And yesterday, too. But it's just gone. So is it completely gone? Yeah. So is there anything that you don't think you could have done before? Okay. And did that hurt at all? No, it didn't hurt. It didn't. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Woo. This lady here was in a car accident 20 years ago. What happened? I, I was rear-ended, and um, it's over 20 years it's caused degenerative bone disease and arthritis and two bulging discs, and I had such limited motion, and I started moving my head, and it's just free. It's just... just <laughs> so this is the first time in over 20 years? That I could move it this much, yes. That's amazing, isn't it? Father, may that never come back. May she have freedom in her neck all the time, Father, and other parts of her body, too. And Christopher, you woke up with a backache this morning, and what happened to you? Well, when I was being prayed for, you know, I just sensed the Holy Spirit come upon me, and uh, I'm healed. No, no more pain. Yeah, that's the way it should be, right? Let's just give the Lord just a hand and a woohoo! That's the way it should be. Thank you. All righty, here's an Australian. What happened with you? I've been traveling for eight weeks through lots of countries to get here, and I, I just hurt my back sleeping in funny places. So this heat came through my body and the back pain left completely, but I also wanted hepatitis C healed because whenever I eat, I can't digest the food and I just believe that that's gone with the back pain. Oh no, next time I eat a meal if it's gone. Now should we put lots of like hot sauce and just really work it and find out? A real fat oil. Okay. Well, we can do that as well. We can, we can see that and test that for tonight. So, Father, we're asking that she'd also been healed from this hepatitis in the name of Jesus. Now, that's the Holy Spirit with you right away. Come, Holy Spirit. Ooh. Cleanse her body from hepatitis in Jesus' name. And this gentleman is from Korea. And I won't repeat his name because, uh, you know, I just can't say it. But, but he speaks very little English, but what happened? Yeah. I had a severe pain in my ear, but it's gone. Don't you love that? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Whoa. Bless him, Father. Bless him. Whoa. This lady was just telling me she has uh, had a throat problem. Yeah, for four or five years, it's like a needle, always uh, just between there. I went to the whole kind of doctor, and they cannot find anything. And then, so the last doctor said, the only thing we can do is we're doing the surgery. And to make your voice a little bit open and bigger, but we're not promise you can sing. I said, no, I born for worship of the Lord. For, for that, so I'm stuck for surgery. Huh? Now I feel, and, and what happened? Now I just, I cough. Somebody praying for me, and I started to cough, and I feel better. Now I can swear and easier. Very good. So when the worship's on tonight, you have to go like full blast. All right. I always do that. <laughs> well, Father, may this not ever come back to uh, Ju Cheng. Holy Spirit, Pastor Ju Cheng Cheng. Holy Spirit, come. Fill her up. Come, Daddy.
And when it, you, you were just explaining that you, ha you were diagnosed with colon cancer. It was suspected that I had it, but then I, I knew it because later on, um, like last, some months ago, I could see this you know, bleeding. And, um, but I, I want to stand up in faith that Jesus is my healer. And I told God I don't want to go back to the hospital anymore. So you, had, you just had some pain, and some people were praying for you, and what happened? Um, I, I just felt the Holy Spirit come from my mind. It was such peace. And also that the pain that I was feeling there, it really has gone now. It's just progressively going, and now I don't really feel it. But, you know, that's right. Yeah. You know what? Let's stretch your hands to this lady, because, you know, the, the sense that I'm getting is, you know, that there's a bit of fear you know, that it might just come back. And so, Father, we are just agreeing right now in the name of Jesus that all fear comes off of your daughter right now. And we just rebuke that colon, that speck right now in the name of Jesus. And we just speak to that pain right now. And we just tell it to go to the foot of the cross. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just come and just fill every place inside of her that had that fear that controlled her in any of that, any shape or form, Lord. And Father, would you release your love on her right now and on her body in complete healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. And this is Pierre from Quebec. And he was telling me that he was working in the bush and uh, the big heavy saws and things and you hurt your, your shoulder. Yeah, that's it. I have uh, I developed a, a pain in my shoulder and then... Uh, this uh, young man prayed for me uh, and <laughs> you know I'm used to pray for others and I'm not used to receive and when <laughs> he said to uh, the job is just only to receive don't pray don't uh, just relax and receive so I said okay Lord I receive and then the pain is gone <laughs> very good who was it that prayed for you where, where was the guy who prayed for you who prayed for this guy where is he who prayed for this gentleman Somewhere over here. Oh, there he is. Okay, very good. A young man. He is a young man. He's a very young man. He probably has no experience, you know. So I don't know if you should trust that. <laughs> Just joking. Go ahead, Sandra. This is Matt. And Matt, tell us what happened to you. Um, well, for the last couple of months, like... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I had like numbness, numbness, not pain, like just numbness, like I couldn't um, really do anything properly with this hand. I could, but you know, it, it's, it's hard to explain, but you know, healed, like, yeah, I, I was, um, I am a guitar player. Oh, I'm so nervous, man. Okay, take a deep breath. Okay, just take a deep breath, everybody. Okay, there we go. Okay, there, see, now everything's okay. Right, yeah. Um, I'm a guitar player, and uh, recently I haven't been practicing. I've been like putting it off and just saying, you know, it's probably just repetitive strain injury, and I'll just, you know, let it, let it go. And uh, you know, I can seem to be able to move it fine now, like so. No numbness. No. That's good, Lord. We just bless this hand, Father. We bless it. We thank you, Father, that you came and you took away the numbness. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would bless Matt as he plays his guitar. You know, my son plays a guitar too, and guitar players are wonderful. They, they, they bring out beautiful music, and I bless you to play music that honors God. I bless you. Whoa. This lady has come from Holland just to be healed. So you came to the right place, didn't you? Yeah. And she's saying that she's had asthma for how many years? 17. 17. Yes. Okay. And what do you feel right now? No, better. Much better. So you're, you're, able to, you're healed. You're able to take a deep breath? Yes. Yes. Do you normally go like this when you breathe? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being silly. You're taking a deep breath. So, Father, we thank you that she's been healed. Thank you, Father, that she knew to come here. Do you know, that's like the lady, remember, that had the, the, uh, the hemorrhaging for, what was it, 12 years? And the Lord just told her, Lord gave her inside information and said, go and touch the feet of Jesus and you'll be healed. Was Jesus aware that she was sneaking up behind him? No. Did Jesus have anything to do with the healing other than just standing there? No. It's another proof that Jesus wasn't functioning in his divinity because he would have not only known she's sneaking up on me, but he would have turned around and said, you there, lady, what have you just done? And he didn't know that. 
And it's amazing, isn't it, how the Lord is able to speak into us and our faith just rises up. And so here you are. So this is worth your trip, wasn't it? I work. I left my work and I take my husband with me. His agenda is full. I think I don't care. <laughs> I want to go to Jesus in Toronto. <laughs> well, very good. Bless you. Oh, stretch your hands towards this lady. Father, what's the, what's the magic, not magic word, what's the good word, four-letter word? More. More, Father. Father, we bless her as she goes home. They just have amazing testimony for her friends, her church, her family. And we bless you to be able to minister to everything that moves, that needs help. Cats, dogs, practice with animals if you need to. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Good. <laughs> this is Grace. Grace, what happened with you? Um, I've had terrible pain for a couple of years in my shoulders and my neck. And um, there were certain things I couldn't do, like carry my bag to school without a lot of pain, and it's just gone. So, You know, that's a good thing, you know. Can you imagine if you're a student and you have to write a note, sorry, I couldn't do homework because I couldn't carry my bag? No, no. <laughs> but anyways, isn't God good? Because now you'll have lots of homework. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But I bless you, Grace. <laughs> Sorry. I just thought my kids would think of that. But anyways, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would bless Grace. And I thank you, Father, that in an instant, your love came down on her and you took away that pain. And Lord, I thank you that today, Grace is living proof of a sign and wonder, Lord. And I ask that you would just bless her hands. Whoa! And Father, that she would just be able to carry it in her school and with her friends and, and wherever she goes. And just the more of the presence of the Holy Spirit more of his power, more anointing. All these things belong to you. Amen. Wow. This is a pastor and her husband, sorry, her and her husband are pastors in New Jersey, and you had a bad back. How long? A couple of months. Okay. And what couldn't you do? Breathe. I would actually feel it in my lower back. Okay. And, and what about now? I can breathe, and I don't have a problem standing. Could you bend over before? I could. Okay but it was basically just movement. Right. How about you just jiggle around, like do something, and that's, that's no pain now? No, not at all. Not at all. Very good. Bless you, Daddy. Father may never come back in Jesus' name. Never comes back in Jesus' name. Ooh, Sandra. This is Dave, and Dave... Uh, since, More of the Holy Spirit. since I flew over a couple of days ago, I've had sort of discomfort in the back of my knee every time that I've been trying to walk and a bit of pain, and it's, I think it's all gone. He thinks it's all gone, so let's stretch our hands to him because we want it 100%, don't we? And Dave, do you receive your healing because of what Jesus did on the cross for you? Yes. I receive my healing because of what Jesus did on the cross for me. Bless you, David. I bless you. I bless you. Can you the see Father the anointing going Whoa! into him? Oh, the Father loves you. And Lord, I ask that you would just come to the back of his knee right now and take away all that pain, Lord, 100%. 100%. Whoa, 100%. Thank you, Father. Can you see the Holy Spirit going into that man and healing him right now? Learn. Here's rule, not rule number one, because I don't know which, of the, which order the rules are, but one of the rules... It's my rule number one. When you're ministering, always have your eyes open. Do you know there's no story of Jesus ever closing his eyes when he ministered? He was always able to see what God was up to. When you see someone like this and see what the Holy Spirit's doing, you can just say, you know what, the Holy Spirit's with you. Because some people don't know when the Holy Spirit's with them, do they? And when you say, well, he's with you right now, like you're getting filled right now. Did you know that? Yes, okay. Um, I could just feel the Holy Spirit going in her body. And it's just, it's just amazing, isn't it? We're going to, all the way through the conference, you're going to, I want you not just to listen to the, the talks, but would you watch when there's demonstrations of how to heal people and how to minister? Don't just sort of, uh, what's the right word? Yeah, dial out, but listen to how people pray. Watch how, what they do with their hands. Like I purposely was holding this lady's hand because I know that if I'm holding her hand, Holy Spirit's going to go in, right? So just watch for those kind of things. When you read the scriptures about Jesus, about Paul, look at how did they do it, why did they do it, where did they do it, you know, all that kind of stuff, and you're just going to pick up amazing, amazing things. So like, for example, the, the stuff in the, um, 
those two little books that I've written. It's just those kind of little insights. And once you learn those things, it makes healing so, so much easier. Now, you have neck problems, but you don't anymore. No, I don't have any neck problems anymore. What was your problem before? Uh, I had several injuries on my neck, and uh, I just recently fell and re-injured it again. So. And now you can move your neck, no problem? No problem. Amen. Father, may her neck never have these problems again in Jesus' name. This is Laura, and Laura, um, what happened to you? I didn't have a voice, and I, um, I couldn't even whisper, and I wanted to praise and worship, but at least um, it's crackling and it's coming. Whoa, I can feel it. <laughs> so more, Lord, stretch your hands out to her. Holy Spirit, we just bless Laura. And Father, because of what you sent your son Jesus did on the, whoa, on the cross for her, Lord, we just say voice comes back. Her voice comes back and all the swelling in, those, in the area right now just goes right now. And your love's released, Father, that she can worship and she can praise you tonight, Lord. And we give you all the glory and praise and honor. Amen. Okay, this lady's from Florida and has, uh, or had, yes. a herniated disc. Uh, probably two or three years maybe longer than that, but I, I knew that I would be healed, but I was standing in, especially for my mother, who has scoli who had scoliosis in the spine. And I came here with a group from my church, Sanctuary Church of God, in, down in Florida, Avon Park, my pastor's wife prayed for me, so. So she's a professional healer. <laughs> That's what you are as well, you knew that. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't sound convinced. <laughs> What, what's happening to you right now? <laughs> Whatever it is, I'll take it. <laughs> that's, that's your father's love that you're feeling right now, because your daddy loves you. That's why you got healed, because your daddy loves you. I know. <laughs> Father, more love. And we bless your mom back in Florida, wherever she is, that all the scoliosis will have gone out of her body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ooh. Just keep going. Keep receiving. And Janet, what happened with you? Well, over the last week to 10 days, I've just had crippling pain in my knees, hips, and my lower back. And going downstairs was especially hard or bending. And Joseph in the back prayed for me, called the spirit of infirmity, and it just left completely. Completely. So how about you just do what you couldn't do before? Okay. Ah. Woohoo! Thank you, Father. That's amazing, Lord. And this gentleman has had a problem in his wrist? Uh, no, the finger. And uh, anyway, there was some pain, discomfort in it, and it left when we were praying. Okay. And how long have you had that? Uh, about a year. Okay. So you can move no problem. Yep. Excellent. Well, Father, may that never come back. No more injuries in Jesus' name. Amen. He was just saying when he came up here, this is just a small thing. You know what? If it bothers you, it's not a small thing, right? It's a big thing. So, Father, we thank you that you care about every little part of us. In Jesus' name. Bless you, Jim. Good. Okay, we'll just go with you. Okay. Um, for a long time, um, for probably 16 years, um, I had problems with clotting um, in my legs. And every time I stand on my left leg, um, it starts to swell, and it'll start to give me problems. And um, uh, God just told me to mention that, and I was prayed over, and I just felt... Um, a real cool sensation come over the lower part of that leg because normally with clotting there's heat that lets you know that that's there and so I'm just believing God for healing for total healing okay so you felt a you felt a, a, a cool sensation on your leg and and so what couldn't you do before is there anything um, no not really but I just felt um, you know just a swelling um, it hasn't you know, went down, but I'm believing that it is going to go down and that I'll be able to do whatever I want and that leg will never swell again. That's right. You just prophesied over your life healing, didn't you? So, Lord, we just agree right now. Angela, Father, we just agree with Angela and we thank you, Father, that this clotting 
no longer affects her leg in any shape or form. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that she is a sign and wonder. And Father, I, ta- I ask right now that you would just take away any swelling that's in that leg and it just completely goes away and that you would just release your love on her right now in the name of Jesus. And this lady's from Scotland. And what's been your problem? Um, chronic muscle fatigue in my lower legs. And I so love to walk. And yet I've been able to, you know, do that properly for the last three years um, without any sort of pain. And the doctors say there's nothing wrong. But uh, when I had prayer, I just felt the power of the Holy Spirit going into the lower legs and wanting to, to run. Um, Did you take a run? No, I mean, I can run. I can do that. But uh, I just felt that was the part that the Holy Spirit was filling and giving that energy. And I, well, I think you should go for a little run. How about you go down? Just run over there, run back. See how you're doing. Good. Come on over here. This is... This is Leo. Okay, Leo, how about you? Um, you tell us what's happening. Uh, I had a de- uh, deteriorating disc uh, from a car accident 40 years ago. And when I was prayed for, I felt my back shifting. And I'm um, just believing I'm healed. You know, he just, Leo just told me he, w- he went to the chiropractor, was it yesterday? So the Holy Spirit just gave him a chiropractor treatment right now. Isn't that amazing? But Leo, have you ever forget um, what happened with your car accident? Um, I was stopped at a red light and I was hit in the back. Have you ever forgiven that person? Yeah. I just ask right now that you would come, Father. And Lord, he's been going to this chiropractor for 40 years. And, Lord, I pray that today would be the day that he never has to go back, Lord. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you do treatments free, free of charge. And, whoa, and it just works quicker. And so, Lord, we bless him. And we bless his chiropractor and we thank him. But, Lord, he needs to move on. So, Lord, we just declare, Leo, your back is totally healed. And we just receive your healing because of what Jesus did on the cross for you. Amen. Now, where did our runner go? Your, how was that? Was that good? Great. All right. Very good. And this lady's had problems with your adrenal glands in your, and in your body. Yes, I actually have autoimmune disease. And actually, as, the, as a result of my adrenal glands and different things, now my body is blowing up. And I have edema. And I have pain all over my body all the time, 24 hours a day. And um, I, I came here to worship God. I didn't come here for the healing, but I said, God, if you want to heal me, go for it. Just it's it. actually a door prize. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and this lady prayed for me, and she said, stop crying and thank Jesus. And I just take that, and already the knees, the knees have gone way down. And I used to weigh 50 pounds less than this, and Mary, who knows me well, knows that. This is water from my kidneys not working and my adrenal glands, and today I believe God has healed me. Amen. Let's stretch our hands towards this lady as well. Father, we're asking that you would, that the healing that she needed, Father, that today that you have done that for her. In Jesus' name, Father. And we bless you to lose that 50 pounds very, very quickly. In Jesus' name. All righty. Now, are you ready for the advanced prayer? If you didn't feel that you were 100% healed yet, could you stand up again? So we were praying for you, but there's still some symptoms. Not sure what happened yet. Some of you will actually have to go and see a doctor, won't you, to actually find out if you've been healed or not. And they need to do x-rays and things like that. In the New Testament, when Jesus was ministering, of all the stories that Jesus had, fully one-third of all the healings that Jesus did the problem was actually a demonic spirit. And Luke, who's a medical doctor, documented more healings than any other of the the writers, and half of the stories in Luke's gospel of physical healings, it was, again, a spirit that was the the issue. So we're going to pray any kind of spirit off of you, any kind of curse off of you, because many cases, when you're ministering to people, if you begin to pray and they, they don't get healed quickly... You need to go to plan B. Is that all right? Uh, If you come to the workshop I'm going to be doing tomorrow afternoon, 
I'm going to try to be as practical as I can and tell you all the little things that we've been learning as a church and how to pray for the sick, and this is one of them. First, you just say, come, Holy Spirit, and then you go, <laughs> then you pray more, and then number three is you go at demons. Okay, those of you that are seated, if you're close to someone, just put your hand on them right now. And if you're not close, stretch your hands to someone who's around you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're asking for every person that's standing, if there are demonic spirits that are at work in their bodies, if there have been curses against them, if there has been any kind of assignment of the enemy that has, has come onto their body to steal their joy, to steal their health, to steal whatever it would be that, uh, that has been robbed from them, Holy Spirit, we're asking in your grace, in your love for your children, would you begin to come and just cleanse them, cleanse their physical bodies, cleanse their emotions, cleanse their minds, cleanse them body, soul, and spirit, every part of who you are. Would you speak a washing right now in the name of Jesus? And spirits lift off of you, lift off of you. Now, some of you may feel some things leaving. Don't try to keep it. <laughs> this is not the time to go, I'm going to be strong. This is the time for you to just let the Holy Spirit do whatever he wants to do. So, Spirit of God, would you come? Would you just lift off every spirit that does not have the name Holy Spirit? And Holy Spirit, would you come? And as these curses are stripped away from their bodies, stripped away from their minds, their emotions, as, as spirits go, Holy Spirit, would you come and would you take lordship and ownership of that place, that physical space where they have been? In the book of Ephesians, Paul talks about don't go to bed angry because you give the devil a foothold, is how it's translated in some translations. The word foothold means territory. It's the, word, the Greek word topos, topography. And the a simplest thing of you going to bed angry with a person at work or angry at someone who is driving in the traffic that day and cut you off, or you go to bed angry at a, at a child or a parent, that very thing allows for Satan to have a place in your physical body. That's what Paul talks about. You give the enemy a foothold, a, a place to stand. And Father, we take away all those footholds in the name of Jesus. We cleanse your bodies right now in Jesus' name. And we welcome the Holy Spirit to come into you right now and his cleansing. And again, I love that passage in 1 John 1, 9, 1 John 1, 9 that he forgives us of our sins and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And certainly a spirit that's from the enemy is unrighteous. And so Holy Spirit, cleanse us from all unrighteousness in whatever form it comes, however it came, whether it's we cursed ourselves, other people cursed us, we've entered into activities that we shouldn't have done. Father, whatever those things were, would you forgive us? Would you forgive us for our part in doing things? This coming Sunday, I'm going to be talking to our church about curses, word curses. And there's a verse in Proverbs 26.2 that says that a curse, if it doesn't have the right to stay, it can't be there. And so the opposite is that if there's reason for it to be there, it's allowed to be there. So, Father, cleanse us. Forgive us for our activities, our part. We forgive others that have spoken against us, that have done things against us. We release them. Father, would you forgive us for the word curses that we've spoken over ourselves and said things like, I'll always be sick. I'll always have this problem. I'll never get better. Father, we break the power of those destructive words. And I just speak that over all of you. I'm just feeling right now the Holy Spirit saying to, that we, to break the power of ungodly words that have been spoken over you. Maybe you've been to a doctor and the doctor said you only have three months to live or you will always have this. And you, the doctor's not your problem, remember. People are not your problem. Satan is the problem, correct? And so, Father, we're asking that you would come against Satan today and his activity and his work in their lives. And may the, the goodness, the love of God come for every single person in the name of Jesus, we pray. Now, just for those of you around them, let's go back to that Holy Spirit prayer. Just say more. Holy Spirit, fill them with more right now. Come. Those of you that are just standing, just receive more of the Holy Spirit right now. Come, Daddy. 
more of the Holy Spirit for you. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Welcome you. Just receive his presence. And again, this is a thing where you do nothing. You just stand there. Just let his, his goodness overshadow you. Let his mercy come. Here's my theory. If God's with you, it's going to get better. If the Holy Spirit comes, something good's going to happen. How can you receive more of the Holy Spirit without something good happen? That just doesn't make sense to me. I wasn't great in math, but that's one of those ones I figured out. If the Holy Spirit comes, something good is going to happen. So, Spirit of God, we welcome you here. Come. Come. All righty. Look at me, folks, those of you who are standing. How many of you are feeling something happened in the spirit realm? Wave your hand if you're feeling something. Okay, that's very good. Could you check yourself and see if you're better now? Bend over. Probe. Push. Cough. Do something you couldn't do. How many of you are feeling better? Wave your hand. Look around, folks. Isn't that amazing? Woohoo! All righty. Kelly, we need to... Do you have a band? No? Do you want to... I think we need to sort of just sing a celebration song about the goodness of God or something like that. Just need to get your drummer out of the deep spirit. Get him back. All righty. Everyone stands. Has this been a good start so far? It's been very good. And this is... This is just going to get better. Like, the, the real professionals start tonight. At, uh, uh, the people have, you know, just amazing, amazing stories. Bill Prankard, if you've never met Bill before, his ministry is to the Inuit in northern Canada and northern Russia and just has amazing stories of the goodness of God, of incredible miracles, incredible healings. Uh, Bill Prankard is one of the few people that when Benny Hinn was pastoring his church in Florida that Bill would be one of the occasional guest speakers. And Benny didn't have too many guest speakers, but Bill was one of the guys that he would bring to preach in his church. And uh, Surpresa, again, just under his leadership, uh, Iris Ministries gone from two churches five, six years ago to like 7,000 churches. And this man here goes into villages and thousands of people get saved in a meeting. Thousands of people get saved in a day. Uh, thousands of people get healed in meetings that he and the people that he's raised up into leadership are able to do. And so this, this is really, you know, we hear all the stories about Roland and Heidi. This is the guy who's doing it. And so you're just going to, I hope that you just get absolutely stretched to just absolutely know in your spirit everything that's in the Bible I can do. Because you have the same Holy Spirit, you have the same Father, the Bible is true, and Jesus spoke it over you. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, Miss Kelly, shall we worship? At the end of, um, after Kelly's led us in some worship, you are going to be dismissed. We start tonight at 7 o'clock. Your chair that you're in is the same chair that you are in tonight on one condition. You have to leave something on your chair that says, this is my chair. So like a Bible, a notebook, if you put your name on the notebook, um, a Canadian dollar bill, um, <laughs> because no one's going to take that. Uh, ladies, can I just encourage you, keep your purses with you everywhere you go, because not always at every event are, is everyone a follower of Jesus, and sometimes there's just purses go missing because people steal them. So just sort of keep your, your belongings with you, that kind of thing. And 7 o'clock we start tonight. We're going to have ministry time tonight at the end of the, the healing time, the plan is that we're going to lay hands on every single person in our prayer team that Mary I just talked about. We're just going to impart more of the Holy Spirit, more anointing. All the way through this week, you're going to get tons of time where people are going to pray for you and say more, and you're going to get time to practice on other people as well. So let's worship the Lord. Miss Kelly.
those of you that just got healings in your body, you can uh, dance around a little and try it out. Whatever one, unless it's a fast, well, unless you go through a drive-in. Well, you, you know, you know, bless your servers. Give over and above. 
Give over and above. Bless them, bless them, bless them. And when you're dancing hearts, go into, you know, wherever you're going to go and eat. And, and, and that uh, I just thank you for divine encounters there with staff. And once they're going to know that they've been in the...